Over the past six years, Destiny 2 has held 23 whole seasons. Some of these seasons have been great, some of them haven't been so good. So in today's video, I want to cover one bad thing from every single season in the entire six years of Destiny. So there will be 23 bad things about Destiny 2. And of course, if this video does well, maybe I'll consider doing one good thing from every single season, but we'll have to see. So let's jump at the time machine and head back all the way to year one of Destiny 2, where it all started in the Red War. Now the first year of Destiny 2, there wasn't really seasons, but there was three main sort of DLC packs that came out in that first year. The first one was Red War. This was the first DLC that came with Destiny. The problem with Red War was all of the hype and the videos that we saw, we were sort of promised that we would lose our light and we would have to fight to the death to actually get it back. Little did we know after just a mere few cutscenes, we actually just got it back by one simple mission of walking on the last city of Earth and eventually just finding the shard and we got our light back. There was no fighting, it was very simple and it was sort of underwhelming. I remember watching all these videos about Gaul taking the light and taking control of the Traveler and we were going to be struggling, but no, we simply just got it back after one cutscene. Now, right after the Red War, we got Curse of Osiris. Now, this is renowned as one of the worst seasons to ever come to Destiny 2, and that is definitely true. Now, it was quite hard for me to pinpoint exactly one thing that was messed up with this season, as there is plenty of things wrong with this season, but to basically summarize it, we had double primary weapons with completely static rolls. There was no sort of random perks that drop on a weapon. If a weapon drops, it had certain perks and that's what you got. The armor at the time did completely nothing except for cosmetic looks. There was no stats or anything. And after all the hype after Red War and the Curse of Osiris release, we actually realized that there was nothing new with this DLC. So not off to a great start here, Destiny. These first few seasons didn't hit that good. But luckily, right after this, we had Warmind release. Now, this is before they were called Seasons, so this one was just called Warmind. Now, Warmind is by far one of the best DLCs that came to Destiny 2, and it was much needed right after the Curse of Osiris. This DLC had the launch of some of the best exotics in the game that players are still using to this day. We had weapons like Whisper of the Worm, the World Line Zero, and the Sleeper Simulant, and also many, many more. This one also came out with a great raid. One of the few negatives about this season that I can actually think of was how hard Escalation Protocol was on release. This event was extremely difficult and you would never be able to do it unless you had a geared group of people that knew exactly what they were doing. Now after these three DLCs, the first year of Destiny 2 came up to a wrap and we moved over into year 2, which is renowned as the best year of Destiny 2, which is the release of the Forsaken DLC. Now as this video is about all of the seasons in Destiny, we can't get confused here with the Forsaken and all of the yearly DLCs with the actual seasonal content. These are definitely two different things here, so don't get these confused. However, Season of the Outlaw was a great season. It brought on a great new activity. It brought back all of the great guns. It brought back special and kinetic ammo in both the primary and secondary slot. It brought out new subclasses, new supers, new weapons, new armor, new exotic. Everything about this first season was amazing. So this is very hard for me to actually pinpoint a negative about this season. But if I did have to name one thing negative about this season, it's the fact that Bungie brought into the game Gambit. Now nah, I'm just kidding. I don't actually know what was bad about this season. It was so good, I can't really remember. Right after Season of the Outlaw, we moved over into Season of the Forge. Now these next few seasons, like I said, came out with Forsaken, one of the best years Destiny 2 has ever had. So all of these four seasons this year were great and they are extremely hard to name bad things about each season. However, one negative about Season of the Forge that I can remember is how tedious and grindy the Forge activity was. Now I'm not saying it was bad, I do love a great Destiny 2 grind, but the Forge grind was something else. Now for me personally, I didn't play much back then in Season of the Forge, but I do remember coming back a few seasons later and trying to go back and get the Izanagi's Burden exotic and from memory this took about seven weeks of repetitive content doing something new every single week to just get this one weapon. And yes, it was definitely worth it because the Izanagi's Burden is still one of the best exotics in the game, but I do definitely remember how grindy this activity was. Now right after this we had Season of the Drifter. Now the one negative about this was that nothing new was really brought here except for a brand new Gambit mode. Now that's alright that this season sort of failed because the following season, Season of the Opulence, is by far the best season Destiny 2 has ever had. 
I think it's pretty safe to say here that everyone in the comments down below probably agrees with me that Season of the Opulence is by far the best season that everyone here has played. It wrapped up Forsaken very well with the story, it had some of the best seasonal activities in the game being the Menagerie, with the best weapons in the game, and I honestly can't really fault this season. This season felt like it had an endless amount of activities to do and I don't ever remember being bored. However, since I do have to mention something bad about this season, as it is the title of this video, I'll say the bad thing about this season was the Tribute Hall. You basically had to go to the Tribute Hall and drain all of your planetary materials and your resources into the Tribute Hall to pay tribute and obviously get some loot. This was Bungie's way of basically trying to reduce all of your inventory's materials, so that you would inevitably have to come back and play the game more to get more materials. It was a little bit of a grind, but there was nothing really needed here to sink thousands of materials into it. It kind of just seemed pointless by the end of the season. Moving over into year 3 of Destiny 2, we had Shadowkeep, and the first season that came out with this was Season of the Undying. Now this season instantly copped some heat and backlash, because it came off 4 great seasons right after the Forsaken launch, and we got Shadowkeep and obviously Season of the Undying, and it didn't perform as well as the seasons did in Forsaken. However, the problem with this season was the seasonal activity, the Vex Offensive. This mission was extremely repetitive with not much change week to week. Eventually, after you got through the mission and you got to the last boss, it was basically just a big minotaur that had a harder shield each time you did it every other week. It was just boring and there was no challenge to this activity at all. Right after this season launched the Season of the Dawn. Now as I was reading and researching some information about this video, because all of these seasons were so long ago, I can barely remember some of these, I found a comment from someone about the Season of the Dawn, and I felt as though this comment perfectly summarized what everyone was feeling about this season. If I can remember where I saw this, I'll leave a link in the description down below. This user said, This season, Bungie hyped up a new puzzle to solve as a community to reward us. The rewards for that quest were grossly mishandled. Over the course of it, we had millions of people looking at a gravesite with a sword on it. We were told it was our future grave and that we were buried with our favorite weapon. The sheer amount of hype and speculation that spiraled throughout the community was at a record high and they gave us a bastion, a useless exotic. So if you don't really remember what happened in this season, basically there was a new puzzle that came out that was a massive secret and the whole community had to work together and Bungie basically overhyped this puzzle and at the end, we were rewarded with the Bastion, pretty much a useless exotic that no one uses anymore. Right after this season, we had Season of the Worthy. Now in this season, we had one of the worst PvP metas in the entire game. The go-to weapon was the Hard Light, and it was making PvP not fun at all. Following this season, we had Season of the Arrivals. This was a very good season, it brought out a lot of new content. It introduced some new Nightfalls, some great new weapons like the Falling Guillotine and the Prophecy Dungeon. This was overall a great season that everyone enjoyed. Probably one of the top fives out there. However, this season went on for way too long. This was Destiny's longest season thus far, extending out to five whole months. However, this five whole month wait was concluded with the new DLC Beyond Light and the launch of Season of the Hunt. Now although Beyond Light was actually pretty fun, it brought out Stasis and a few other new things, we're looking at the Season of the Hunt here, and this season was very mid. The problem with Season of the Hunt was obviously this seasonal activity, each hunt. There was only three hunts that could be done, and all of these could be finished in under a minute with minimal effort. All of the bosses at the end of each of these hunts had about 7 HP, and they were killed within seconds. It had no challenge and it just felt pointless and there was no urge to do any of these hunts at all. None of the new weapons that were introduced with this season were worth getting at all. All of the weapons we already had were way better, so it just felt like this season was completely useless and there was no need to do it. Season of the Chosen followed right after this, which was actually a pretty good season. The seasonal activity was quite fun, but there wasn't any difficulty to it. Each battleground had quite a few enemies to kill and it actually was quite enjoyable at the start. The enemy density was more than ever and it did feel a bit chaotic at some times. However, you could actually never wipe in this activity. 
It felt like the game was holding your hand the whole time you were doing it. If you died as a fire team on the final boss, that's all good, just respawn, it's not that hard. Following this season, we had Season of the Splicer. This was a great season in my opinion. It feels like Bungie sort of has a bad season, then they have a good season, and then they have a bad season, and then they have a good season. It's very, very back and forth here from good to bad, and then back to bad, and then over to good. The seasonal activity in this season was great. The story developed around it was awesome. The weapons were cool and new. However, I will state one thing here about The Last City. This is where the Elixir obviously came to hide out with all of us Guardians, but there was literally nothing to do here. They hyped it up as if it was some new area that we could go and visit and do stuff at, but it was literally nothing. You could fly here and just, I don't know, go AFK. Extremely boring. It would have been pretty cool if they added something here, but it was just useless. Season of the Lost came up next, and this one was actually pretty good. However, this season lasted longer than the Arrivals. The Arrivals was five months long. However, Season of the Lost lasted for six whole months just completely way too long for a season, and we got extremely bored by the end of it. However, right after this launched the Witch Queen, year 5 in Destiny 2. The season that came out with Witch Queen was Season of the Risen. Now after playing the Witch Queen campaign and having a lot of fun with some of the best storytelling we've had, Season of the Risen was pretty boring. To put it simple, it was completely short. It was only 4 weeks of storytelling with the season, and that's it. That's all we got, 4 weeks of storytelling. Pretty basic, and it was pretty boring. Season of the Haunted came next, and this seemed like a great season, with Solar 3.0 coming, and also Duality, a brand new dungeon, but technically these aren't actually a part of the season, as the dungeon is sold separately, and Solar 3.0 is a sandbox change that will stay with the game forever. So all we really had with the season was the Nightmare Containment activity. Now this activity was actually pretty fun, but the problem with it was that we had access to the entire Leviathan location. It was back and we could explore explore it and adventure around it. However, in reality, we were sort of stuck to the first section, the Castileum, because this is where the location of the seasonal activity was held. So if you left this first location to adventure, you pretty much couldn't really do anything, so you were just stuck in the Castileum, farming out the seasonal activity. And of course, this was pretty boring because we wanted to explore more of the Leviathan. Season of the Plunder came right after this, and at this point in Destiny 2's lifespan, people are getting pretty sick and tired of this seasonal rotation and the repetitive notation of the game. So the response to new seasons that came every time around was obviously pretty negative by the Destiny 2 community. And this is completely fair enough and valid from the community. So, as every single new season comes out from here, the community's response to each season gets progressively worse. Plunder is sort of somewhere in the middle. Plunder wasn't great, but it also wasn't bad. With this season, we actually got two new activities. We got Catch Crash, which was a six-player activity, which was actually extremely fun, but we also got the Expeditions, which were a three-player activity. You would pretty much do Catch Crash to get some currency, and then you would go and do the Expeditions to actually get the loot. However, the problem here was with the Expeditions. With Catch Crash actually being pretty fun, the Expeditions were extremely tedious and very boring. This was basically a glorified escort mission that you can basically AFK while your other teammates do it. It also took forever to finish. If you've ever done an escort in any single game, you would know that all of these missions completely suck. Right after this season, we got Season of the Seraph to wrap up Year 5 of Destiny 2. This season just seemed useless and completely boring. This was just another one of those seasons where we had to go and fix Rasputin, and I swear we've already done that about five or six times now in the Destiny history. I seriously don't understand how many times Rasputin actually needs to be fixed. We pretty much just got a bunch of reused assets with no new guns and just reskins from past seasons. But anyway, this led us into the current year of Destiny 2, which is Year 6 and the launch of Lightfall. Now we all know how Lightfall launched and I won't even mention a thing about that because you already know. However, the season that came out with Lightfall was actually called Season of the Defiance. The negative that I found here with Season of the Defiance was the killing off of Amanda Holiday. Like what the hell was the point in killing her off? It felt completely useless and there was just no need for it. I remember logging in one week to the seasonal story and next minute Amanda Holiday's dead. When Amanda Holiday died, this sort of just felt pushed on us as a community from Bungie 
to sort of force some sort of emotional moment from all of the Destiny 2 Guardians. From memory, I think she saved a dreg in the cutscene, and then she just died in front of our faces for absolutely no reason. Following this season, launch Season of the Deep. Now, the problem with this season was the cover art. I remember Bungie released the photo for Season of the Deep and all the information about it, and the whole community was up in shambles being like, what the hell are we actually going to be able to swim inside of Destiny 2? Well, no, of course we couldn't swim in Destiny 2. We got baited as usual. It was awful going underwater, the stupid slow walk and the clipping onto things and not even being able to jump here and there, and you just fall off the map. It was completely annoying and there was nothing fun about it at all. The dungeon that launched with this season was actually pretty fun, however, more than three quarters of the dungeon I felt like I was swimming in water. Right after Season of the Deep launched Season of the Witch, and in my opinion, this was actually a great season that I had a lot of fun in. The Altars was a great seasonal activity that was actually extremely challenging, and all of the card hunting was quite fun. There was lots of secrets around it, and it was just very enjoyable. Every week when I logged on, I thought there was something new and secret to go and find, and it was great fun. The only negative here that I saw with this season was the actual activity in the Altars. You would get these tokens that you could then claim in the altars to either do a tier 1, tier 2, or a tier 3 difficulty altar to obviously change the rewards. Now, the problem here was that you could simply just do two tier 2s to get the same rewards as a tier 3 one. There was almost no point in doing a tier 3 because A, it was too hard, and B, it took way too long. So in the time that you could smash out multiple tier 1s or just two tier 2s, it would be done and you'd get the loot, which would be the equivalent of just doing one tier three. So it pretty much just felt like there was no need to do a tier three difficulty one because it got the same rewards as the other tiers. And obviously now we are all caught up to Season of the Wish, the most recent and current season in Destiny 2. So far, I will say in my opinion, Season of the Wish has been a great season. The Coil is one of the best and most fun activities that I've done in a while. We have some of the best seasonal weapons to go and get right now that are definitely meta defining and some things that you should definitely try and get. However, the one negative about this season is how long this season is going for. This season is breaking Destiny 2's record of the longest seasonal format of 6 months, and it's pushing that to 7 months. Yes, that's right, Season of the Wish is and will last for 7 whole months. And that's just ridiculous. But anyway, Guardians, there is one thing negative about every single season in Destiny 2. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, comment down below, and let me know in the comments down below your most hated thing about any season in Destiny 2. But anyway, Guardians, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.